All right, we got all of our parts in. Um, as you can see here, uh, we have uh, three new batteries. Uh, we went with the Mighty Max battery line. They um, they seem to be about the cheapest, and they seem to be a decently well-known name brand. They sell it at Amazon, Home Depot. Also got a new controller. Um, and then also you had to get a new throttle with it. This is the uh, six wire throttle, which is a rubberized coating on it. And um, the six wires. Got a new uh, uh, kickstand, which comes with hardware. Uh, we got a new chain. This one uh, comes with a master link, so you can disconnect the chain or remove it from the bike without having to remove the wheel. Um, I got a bag full of crampon style terminals. Um, these are the kind that actually wrap the crimp around the wire and dig into the wire, not like the normal, you know, blue, yellow, red wires. Uh, bearings, we got bearings for the motor. Um, this is 6,000 for one end of the motor. The other motor has 6201. Is that right? Let me see. Yeah, 6201 on the other side. Yeah, one side was uh, um, uh, shielded and one was sealed. So that's, I, that's, I went the same way. Uh, wheel bearings are 6100, I believe. I'm sorry, 6001. Um, need four of those. Uh, we got a new free wheel, uh, new brake lever. Uh, the connector for the, the motor, remember they were wire nutted on. Um, this, I pulled this connector off of an E300 uh, scooter. And the uh, terminals here are the ones that you crimp on the wire, just like the other style here, but this actually fits in the connector. Um, if you need one of these connectors, they have the kits all over Amazon. I, if I can find one, I'll put it a, a link below, but it comes in the the two pin, the three pin, the four pin connectors, it's like a whole kit, it comes with all the terminals to crimp on. And I think like a whole uh, assorted pack is like $10. Um, hardware, remember the, the case, um, we're missing those bolts. Uh, original, the factory are M5 times 0.8 millimeter thread. Um, and you, four of them are about 55 mill, millimeters long. Two of them are about 20 millimeters long. Uh, if you go to the local hardware store, you're probably not going to find um, uh, metrics in this length locally. You may have to order them. Uh, the next closest standard size, which you will find various lengths that you may find, is uh, number 10, 32 threads per inch. And that's actually what I got here. But when you get the lock nut, it will actually be bigger than the the recess in the um in the cover let me let me show you what I'm all right about. so if you're looking at the cover there's a recess here on the other side to hold the nuts and this is the number 10 screw uh, number 10 32 uh now lock nut it's like two millimeters um too big for this the only size that fits um is these itty bitty little M5.08 or 0.8 uh, nylock washers. But the good thing is that uh, standard size 10, 32 threads per inch is pretty much dang near identical to M8 um, point, or I'm sorry, M5.8. Uh, the threads per inch, it's off by like a quarter of a thread over the whole span of an inch. So something like the size of a nut's not really gonna make a difference. The number 10 screw will fit into a M5 nut easy because it's just slightly undersized. Now you go the other way, it's gonna have a hard time. You can't put a metric um, M5 into a number 10 nut. That, that'll be too big, but this actually works out fine. So what I'm actually doing is I'm using standard size bolts to go through the metric nuts that fit inside this right here. Um, one other thing I picked up, I picked up a 3 8 um, expansion bolt. Uh, you'll see me use this here in a little bit. Uh, the bearing that goes on the motor, the one for the shielded bearing inside, 
it's uh, it's a blind hole so we're going to utilize this to grab the bearing that's in there and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can utilize this to pull it out and we'll show that here in a little bit all right so we already got the fairings off and everything so now we're just going to uh, and the controller and the batteries we're going to go ahead and take the wheels off All right, one of the first things we're going to look at is uh, we're going to take this off and try to get this free wheel replaced. See how just, I don't know if you can hear how bad this sounds. Yeah, it sounds super dry and this thing's been used for a while. Um, so let's take this off here. Here, you can hold that. So the 10 millimeter on the back side, and then of course Allen on the front. What we're doing is we're just getting the, uh, get that please. We're just getting the sprocket detached from the free wheel right now. So this, um, there's like a special tool um, that goes in these little notches here um, to grab it because if you try to loosen it, you know, it's 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 in the free um uh, direction, so you're not going to be able to grab anything. Well, this one here kind of grabs a little bit. But anyway, um, I'm going to see if I can make my own tool. All right, so I made this, and this is pretty much mirrors what the... Uh, the tool is I just took a piece of pipe that kind of matched this and cut the teeth to where it would mesh with the uh, the free wheel. Um, I actually put the axle bolt through it, put some washers on it to keep this in place, and put a pipe branch on it, hoping to break this thing free. And like a couple other guys on YouTube that you probably already seen, um, if you're watching this video, uh, it's it's pretty much seized on there. So I'm going to do pretty much like what the other two did. I'm gonna cut the outer ring off of this. And uh, I think after I get the outer piece off, uh, I may split the inner, I don't know. I may not wanna do that. But I may just take straight up a pipe wrench, grab on the inner piece, and uh, try to do it that way. Um, especially after adding some heat. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. All right, so here we're gonna cut this thing. I think I'm gonna do, uh, we'll do one spot if that didn't come off easy, we'll go we'll go to the other side. But here we go. Uh, I got bearing balls going everywhere. 
think I may go to the other side and let it just fall apart. So we got the outer part off. So let's uh, make crank it on a little bit here with the pipe wrench. Well, I already gave it a go with the pipe wrench. Uh, she's on there, so we're gonna try some map gas a little. Well, don't worry about the bearings, we're replacing them. It looks like that's uh, good enough. Got a slit in this thing. I'm gonna try to spread it. Hold on. Once it's split, you can untwist it. Fun thread here. There you go. Yeah, I got a little bit of damage right there to the thread. If you can see that. That's just a little slice, that ain't gonna hurt it. But uh putting the next one on should be pretty easy. We'll just spin it on. And we'll next thing we'll do is we'll tap them bearings out and put some new ones in it. Alright. I'm going to just test fit this on here, make sure it screws on okay. Uh, I'll put this on after we uh, swap these bearings out. But uh, you know, make sure you're not cross threading because it's a super fine thread. So, yeah, that fits over. Even off that, that cut, there's, you know, um, it fits on there fine. So, yeah, it looks like the most fastest way to do this is cut the outer, you know, race of the uh, freewheel knock all the balls and everything out and then uh take this and split it and again if there's just a little cut on the threads it's not going to hurt anything but if you want to go a little shallow as long as you cut all the way through or, or majority of this once you start hitting it with the um, chisel it you know these things it, it'll the um, spreading force will will break it and once it spreads just swivel that thing off boom that's done I think the next one, I can probably knock that thing out in probably five minutes. Um, all right, on down to bearings. All right, for knocking these bearings out, um, I made a little tool here. Um, I actually did this before on a previous video for removing mini bike bearings. It just happened to be a different size. Just take a bolt, grind it down kind of a cone shape, uh, split it. If you can see that, split it down the middle. Let me get over here. Split it down the middle. Uh, well, before you split it, drill a little dimple down it. So what you do is you insert this in head first, and once it pops through, it, you know, it closes up a little bit as it goes through and it expands out. And to keep it expanding, you flip it over and then take a punch that'll fit in that little divot. And as you hammer it from the other side, it'll expand out and allow it to pop out. Because uh, 
doing this and trying to grab the other race, sometimes it just keeps sliding out. So uh, I'll show you how this works. Pop in there. So then it's, it's all the way through, it's loose. Flip it over. And I've got, got a hole here on my bench so I can make this a little easier. And then uh, once it's flipped over, take your punch and then try to find that little divot. Um, which should be in here somewhere. I should probably drill that a little bigger. Am I in it? Oh, I was already in it. There we go. All right, so you get it in there, find the center, then just take a hammer. Boom. There's the spacer that goes in between the bearings to keep them from squeezing. And luckily, I got a little box here. So that fell out. And the. Uh, where's my little piece at? Oh! It's stuck to the tip of this. So, as you can see, what's going on is when you punch that through, it just holds on to the bearing and knocks it out the other side. I don't know if I could just get this thing to release. So now we got the tube out, we got the bearing. We'll flip this over. And we'll do the same thing. Um, actually, you don't have to hammer that piece on this one once you got the tube open. Because you can probably, you know, essentially just drift it from the other side here. Actually, you know, we'll just take another punch and angle it here. Molly, can you put your hand underneath here to grab that when it falls down? Is it gonna hurt? No, 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 no. You got it? Let's see. Boom, that was it. Look how easy that was. And then all you gotta do is just pop your new ones in. Let me go get those. All right, so you got your new bearing. Um, just kind of seated in there. Grab yourself a socket. It's about the same size as the outer diameter. This one's one of those uh, Harbor Freight 19 millimeter impacts. Just happened to be the right size. And what we'll do is we'll hammer in place. Go, that's flush and then we'll just flip around and make sure remember to make sure to grab your tube and slide it in there grab the other bearing all right here's the other bearing get your socket lined up i put the tube in right yeah okay All right, I think we're good. All right, before you go putting this thing on the bike and have a bunch of trouble, make sure that tube center, get yourself a rod or take your axle and make sure that's centered up. It'll make it a whole lot easier putting that axle bolt in. Once it's, once you're trying to get it on the, uh, the bike. All right, so now what we're gonna be doing is, uh, you know, these wheels are kind of rusty. Um, take some steel wool Let's see if you can see a nasty part here. Hopefully, you see all that rust right here. Just take steel wool. And pretty much, we'll just do this to the entire wheel. But you know, there's still little minor pits here. But at least this gets 
majority of it, you know, the 10 feet away, it looks fine. If you can see the, the shine there. So we're gonna do all the wheels like this. All right, we've got this thing pretty much cleaned up about as much as, uh, as we can. I mean, it looks, it's not perfect, but it gets the majority of the stuff away. There's still a little bit we'll, we'll go back over, but you know, just a little bit of still wool makes, pretty much makes these wheels significantly better looking than the, the rusted way they were when they were left outside. Now I got the new bearings popped in and everything's free spin in there. Make sure to, you know, we'll take our new sprag and put it, or I'm sorry, Freewheel, put it on. Um, when you do, make sure you leave these little divots, if you have this style, facing outward, because uh, that's what you'll use to um, knock this off if you ever have to replace it again. Or you can just do the cutoff method again, if I can get that thing on there straight. So we'll spin that on there like that. Make sure that snap ring's behind it. We didn't take ours off. And uh, you don't have to just crank on it because the, the bike will naturally tighten itself up as it goes. And all we have to do now is put our sprocket back on. I won't bore you with that, we'll do that off camera. But we're pretty much done with the back wheel. Front wheel is gonna be pretty much the exact same. Uh, we'll use that little tool, we'll knock the bearings out and pop the new bearings in. Um, so we won't bore you with that one either.